Well, uh, now, yes, no. All right. Give it one second. And we are live. Well, welcome everyone to the amazing collection of people and experts about the hybrid um, conference that we're doing, one, the first of its kind, I think. And we have a beautiful uh, presenters today. And um, just to kind of sum it up, I just want to call on one of the people who've been watching all day, Nadi Hana. Can you talk a little bit about what you what you discovered today, Nadi, about yourself and the, the, these people, presenters? Absolutely, I'm, I'm honored. Um, I have been in tears all day with everyone on this panel. I just feel like such deep gratitude and so many of you I've been following for so long and I'm so inspired. And I just wanna say thank you for the work that you're doing and the work that you're doing that you've done as the pioneers completely inspires and validates everything that I've been doing for so many years, going around and talking about interspecies communication and DNA manipulation, and I, I haven't known why. And you all have validated so much for me, and I hope to go on and be validating for other people. It's just like, oh yes, this is why I'm here, and I'm so grateful to all of you. It's been an incredible day. My life purpose is just clear. <laughs> <laughs> your, life, your life purpose is clear because of what you heard today, huh? Absolutely. I, I am part of the team. I, I have been talking about our multidimensionality and I'm going to bring in hybrids program into the conversation because we need to find each other. We need to know what we're doing and we need to empower each other. I am so ready to go out and just talk about it. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Right. And it's a full day tomorrow as well. So it's not just today. It's it's going to be going on. And Neil, are you going to join us today? I mean, for this panel. So, Sheila, how would you like to uh, start off uh, with um, some of the questions? But um, I think what I just want to say, what I felt today was a summation from Geraldine's um, analysis and Neil's history and Maya's uh, overview and and Marina was there and Mary and Barbara's really in-depth research and Kamara's multi-dimensional presentation. It's like if you're not transformed just by watching this today, then then I don't know. Go watch. Go go home and watch the football game or something. I I, I don't know. <laughs> but and Barbara, you were great too. And so. Uh, um, I don't know, really know where it is, because in a way there's no words. We are this species in transition. We are. So um, there were some questions, but Sheila, what do you have to say about what you heard today? Oh, you know, I was so excited uh, for this conference and I am just over the moon. I could not be happier. All of the information that came forward is so timely. And as Dottie said, it really validates a lot of the work that's going on out there. And to have all of this amazing research with a subject that is so, for a lack of better terms, people who are not awake, it would be kind of an abstract thought. But you guys have really solidified this the concept of the hybridization and really explained the entire process. And I am so grateful and so excited. And I just, I just thank you all for being here. Yeah, we are moving into the future. So I want to actually start with Barbara, because you've been probably at it, you and Mary, you know, you've been at it for a while. And have you seen this shift in this welcoming of the idea of hybrids into the people you work with and the general public. Talk about that a little bit. I, I definitely have. Um, I mean, there are plenty of mainstream people around uh, who just don't go there. You know, they don't think about these things at all. And they don't, I think what, I think they don't want to, you know, they, they've got enough on their plate, let's say. But mm -hmm. having said that, um, I do um, meet other people who are not working in this field who uh, seem to be more receptive to the idea and more intrigued that there are extraterrestrials, number one, and that there are some people who um, are a mixture of people. I, I, think, I think slowly the idea is increasing. We're, we're gaining 
some momentum. And that's certainly true of the people who come to me uh, for regressions that, you know, many, many of them um, are already thinking that they might be hybrids and wondering about that. Right. And what about they have reason to. They have reason to think that they might be hybrids. Yeah. What about you, Mary? Have you seen a shift in people's attitude and awareness of, of what we're calling hybrids? Oh, you slowed up. Hold on. Mary, are you with us? I'm with you. Um, Good. <laughs> I would say two things. I have been amazed at how quickly um, mainstream have actually started to look more seriously at all of this now. Um, and what's interesting for me is when you get an, you know, a seven or eight year old, I recall very clearly an eight year old telling me that she'd been taken by her uh, special friends and they showed her genetic engineering of different species and told her that they do this, they seed other planets in this universe and other universes. So when you've got children coming out with this information, the parents are really going to be faced with, do you want to believe this or not? So, so I think, you know, this is where it really is going to explode is through these new children and the new young adults like Marina that are actually owning it and putting it out there. So I think we're in, in for some interesting times. Yes. <laughs> Marina, is that, did that happen to you? How did you explain that you were not a normal human to your parents? <laughs> well, they actually had a background because when I will be six years old, I will actually tell them, I am an ET, I come from another planet. And they will ask, well, how are you so sure? Uh, how is that happen? And I said, I teleported to the womb of my mom. And I'll be so sure about it. I will be embracing it so, so greatly that they will be like, well, she sounds like she knows. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that is so cute, actually. <laughs> yes, that's great. <laughs> so, so and, and Maya, from your perspective, what do you make? I mean, how does the mainstream actually accept how do we go from you know our little bubble of a subculture to a mainstream that doesn't know what to do with this or some of the mainstream I mean, how would you say because you're you're coming from that world in a way right maya well you've asked the question that's at the top of my list these days is okay. you know <laughs> uh, you know my background my entire grateful participation in a development of uh theory at Harvard had to do with the stages by which we learn or change and that there are there are mechanisms to how a person changes and and we've been part of a, a Newtonian era that believes that if we could just change our mind that's all we need to do is just change our mind and changing our mind does absolutely nothing other than give us the opportunity for the next step which is to change our heart and it's the, it's the mechanism of the heart that basically opens the door to changing who we are. And we have a lot of ideas that float around. And it's a great thing to have a great idea of, oh my gosh, maybe there's, there's uh, more to meet the eye than what is here on our planet. But we have people who are, we have, we have a dominant culture who, is not making meaning the way that we're all making meaning in this conference right now. They do not have any desire to know what the other is, uh, whether it's their neighbor, whether it's about racism, whether it's about Trump versus you know somebody else. They are not uh, at the place of consciousness where knowing the other is even desired. And it's because it's a direct, who, who said it today? I think it was, I, I think it was Geraldine, you know, the as within, so without. If we do not know the other inside ourselves, if we do not know the spiritual nature of who we are, um, we are never going to get to know the other out here, whatever that, whatever we call the other. And so when we get the Pentagon papers coming out and we have all of this 
opportunity for a dialogue about something. We have a stage of development on our planet that is all about fear. It's not inclusion. It's not about inclusion. It's not about unity. And so I feel our opportunity is to help change the narrative. The narrative has to change because we're still going down a road that has to do with division and compartmentalization and, and putting people in boxes and labels. And, um, and I tend to even resist it inside this incredible movement. It's like, I, I, I almost don't want to say, well, here's what a walk-in is and here's what a hybrid is because it is a spiritual conversation that we're having. We're not having a species conversation, you know, or black and white and brown conversation. We're having a spiritual conversation. So my, my, my hope is to contribute to our understanding of how do we bring change to what we would call a, an unbeliever, someone who doesn't even know to ask the question as to is, the, is there life off our planet, which seems so simplistic to all of us here. It seems like such a completely obvious thing to say, of course there is, but for the mainstream that is not, and of course there is feeling. And uh, so how do we represent this transition? How do we, how do we nurture people to be open-minded enough? And frankly, you know, uh, I, I'm not popular for this, but I stand by it. Um, a lot of times crisis is what creates change. A crisis of meaning. Well, we have a crisis of meaning thanks to COVID. We can, we can thank COVID for that if we use what COVID has been to open a door to our own awareness of who am I, why am I here? And that is not the, that's not the question on everybody's lips, but it should be. So um, I just think this is a great question uh, yeah. that you just asked, well, really. When I look at Kamara or Geraldine or Marina, um, I see people who've made that transition. I mean, it's just my observation. They've, they've already embodied <laughs> this thing, this, this butterfly consciousness or whatever you want to call it. And they are mm, actively creating a new narrative in their beingness. Would you say that's true for you, Geraldine? Like you are living your transformation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it, Maya, you said it so beautifully. I mean, you know, how I came into this information was by doing heavy, heavy daily meditation work. And I think that it was the activation of my own DNA, deprogramming of this matrix and construct of separation that allowed me to be able to have access to that information, to have that completely conscious experience. And therefore, all of the walls that, you know, we tend to put up around us about what is reality begin to dissolve. And you come into this new state of awareness and consciousness where you come into unity and it's something that is incredibly foreign to the majority of us and we this this platform these conversations that's why they're so important they allow this education on a whole different level where we're needing to understand what all of these different separate things that we've looked at separately how they're interconnected how they play such an important role in the way that we see ourselves and the world so no, I, I think that's true. And then what you said, Maya, about crisis, I think all of us go through a crisis of belief, a, a crisis where we're confronted. I mean, when I, I always believed in UFOs, but then when I actually had the experience, I said, no. And so it's this, it's this, and, and right now with the government disclosure, I feel like we're all in a science fiction movie, <laughs> but that's, that's not, that is a mental conditioning of this program that's not real. This is beyond anything. So it's like um, I'm sort of uh, disassociated in a sense from the reality because it's so, it's so much what we want. And yet here it is. And it's like, wow, it is here. And how is that possible? And how do I meet this without labeling it this um science sci-fi thing how do i embrace it for what it really is which is the unknown which is like uh we have to all look within i mean i think kamar i think you are a great example of someone who i, I can't talk for it but looked at what you had to deal with and and sort of come out the other side and expressed it beautifully in your art is, is that fair to say oh yeah thanks so much i i just i think that what you know, some people forget is that you know it, it takes a lot to believe in anything. So it takes a lot to believe in religion. 
right? It takes a lot to believe in the spiritual aspects of religion. Like I know religious people who aren't spiritual, who just do it because it's cultural, because their family's always done it. Um, I know people who will work with any kind of person, but when they go home, they're like, oh, that person or this person, I can't really deal with them. Like, I don't, I don't like those type of people, you know? So I think there's a big aspect of this that has to do with soul development as well. If we're talking about reincarnation and we're talking about cycling, you know, we have to understand as uh, I think um, Mary presented and Geraldine presented and Maya also and Barbara presented that this idea that this is a gradual process and souls are going through cycles and as souls develop, souls are more able to maybe accept that type of energy, that type of evolutionary energy that we need in order to create sort of a cascade effect. But it's gonna take some time and that's what this earth school or earth hologram is all about is this sort of platform, this construct with which we can sort of build on you know, where we've been and what we wanna become but it's still an experiment in my opinion. And so it's gonna take this sort of individualistic desire to wanna to get there, but some people just aren't there in my opinion. Some right. souls aren't there. Yeah. Well, you it's know, Alan, Alan, what yeah. Alan was saying, which I think is, is the great opportunity is how do we create change? How do we accompany people in change? Is, you know, prior to this kind of conversation, we've been, we've been talking in the new age language about the ending of the, the patriarchal paradigm, okay? Well, that sounds really good on paper. Can't wait for it to end. Wouldn't that be great? Well, we're seeing it happen. It's causing massive upheaval, unbelievable chaos. My clients who are men are completely fractured and shattered. And that disintegration is the opening to so many people having a crisis of meaning because we've been the patriarchy for, from the beginning of time. And so all of a sudden, all the systems that have helped people define in a tidy way who they are, how they act, how they are in society, what their values are, are limping along, their dark side is coming and splashing all over the headlines. And all of a sudden people are having to ask, wow, this is what I put my life based upon and now it's not working quite right. And I think that, that that disintegration of the patriarchy is going to be um, an activating force for us to be having the conversations that we're having right now. Right. Well, I want to talk to Marina because she's actually, I think she's come in. I can't talk for you, Marina, but after the patriarchy is already dissolved, you know, she's like bringing the, the post the post disclosure world into a living embodiment. So how do you maneuver through the world as this hybrid bridge, Marina? How do you do that? Well, really being a hybrid is becoming more who you are as a human. So mm. I, you know, at the beginning of my awakening, I was too alienated, you know, because of course the dynamics of your consciousness shifts to different ways, different interpretations of energies, of existence, of your own uh, conception of yourself. So and everything around you. So it really is a little bit disassociating and it is a process, you know, you feel alienated, you feel like um, you're becoming more extraterrestrial, which is true. But as we are hybrids becoming more extraterrestrial is just becoming more who we are as humans because we are all hybrids. We were cre created by 22, about different 22 extraterrestrial species. So I think the part in which we are becoming uh, more of who we are, we are embracing more of the humanity. It's actually not so separative as some new age or people have been uh, uh, describing it like, well, like I feel like I don't belong, like I feel like I have to go away, like I feel that I have to be rescued by some ET family or something. It's not really about that, you know, it's about just understanding that every direct connection with every aspect of your outside reality is a direct connection with another aspect of yourself. Right. So, you know, and this right. connects a lot with ET contact because ET contact is just contact with yourself. It's mm -hmm. contact with a higher vibrational aspect of your own consciousness. But I have to ask you one question, Marina. Do you have to pretend to be sort of human when you're in the other, when the real world, or are you just always yourself and it doesn't matter what people think? You know, I used to I used to pretend, especially with my classmates, you know, because they will judge me a lot. But there was a time that I actually processed, you know, this emotion that I had and this kind of like uh, 
trauma that I had a bullying, being bullied or something. And I said, no, this is not helping the agenda. This is not helping the process. I'm going to say it out loud. <laughs> and actually people, those there were people who will not accept me and people who will. And mm. I stayed with the people who will because actually in, at the end of the day, that's the people that I want to connect to. The ones who are prepared right. for, no, for more. Right. And Mary, you've seen that too, right? As um, with working with all these children, uh, young, young adults, um, their process. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm asked by educators, clinical psychologists that are uh, awake and aware themselves, usually because they're already um, experiencing things and they will see these children and they will say to me their biggest issue is that if the parents are still asleep, they can't um, say what she, they want to say. But the primary thing is that the, and the most important thing is I've said to parents is just listen, listen to what they tell you and, and supply them with whatever they say that they need to be what, what they've come here to be. So it's about giving them plenty of love, care and attention, but then on, on most parts, they're there to teach you. And that what wakes a lot of the parents up because their child starts talking about their special friend. They start talking about learning to levitate on a planet, learning how to use their third eye, talking about um, where they've come from, another planet. Oh, don't you remember Nanny? We were both on a crystal planet together or we were on a water planet together. Don't you remember that? <laughs> um, there's nothing like that to activate a, an individual, but the other part that's so important is as people are getting activated is becoming more multidimensional. How do you manage that? How do you own it without people calling you crazy right. or um, you thinking you're crazy? And so right. a lot of my work now is helping people to bring that into an understanding and an awareness that um, is integrated with their 3D um, mm. self so that they're yeah. accessing then. I mean, mm. if you connect someone to their spirit guide and it's a blue being with big black eyes, that's a pretty big wake up call, isn't it? Right. No, that's great. Nadi, are you getting homesick listening to all this conversation? <laughs> uh, homesick and homecoming at the same time. I feel uh, my soul is just, I mean, I'm in, I mean, honestly, it's giving me hope for being on this planet. I was, it was getting really tricky. <laughs> and so remembering, you know, this is such an inspiring um, encouragement to remember. Mm. Yeah, God, I've just been in tears all day. I'm just so grateful to all of you for the work you've done. I mean, you've really tolerated a lot to put the message out and I'm so grateful. <laughs> well, we have to thank Neil. Thank Neil. Come on in and, and talk about your vision here. Yeah, Neil. And, um, you know, what, why would you want to do something like this, like a portal to ascension? What was your vision to create this kind of forum and bring well, in Sheila and me and everyone? Well, as Nadi said, like having that remembrance, obviously, honestly, doing these events so often is a constant remembrance of me of like, you know, the bigger picture, putting things in perspective. Um, and I shared this a few times that realizing now that the traumas that we experience in life we have the potential to be the masters of and my traumas you know as a young child were pretty substantial and I didn't even know until maybe like five years ago after like 10 years of doing portal to ascension that I actually portal to ascension was a complete answer to me trying to figure out how to heal my traumas um, I tried many different things I I, I don't have the belief like bone in me I have I'm such an analytical person that it really took like science and quantum physics for me to get to this point and like I commend people that can just have faith in something like that like I sometimes I wish I could I could do it too but because I couldn't I can never find something to to follow in order to help me transcend these traumas so I went through a, a search of hundreds of modalities like um, all types of energy work body work to try to release whatever was within me that was kind of making me so messed up. I had extreme social anxiety, um, crippling social anxiety. It's happened multiple times in my life. Sometimes when I have um, certain issues that pop up in life, I'll get it again. I'll have like a relapse of social anxiety. And it's, so, and it's all from childhood. So I've been on this journey to attempt to figure it out. And as I did that, 
first thing I found out was ancient history and a true history and how history has been written and rewritten by the victors. And that completely got me into what did these ancient people know? And that is where it led me to ancient sciences that led me to this understanding of like this cosmos. We're all just vibration and frequency experiencing ourselves here. And now I'm at this point where I, the more that I know that I've been putting on these events to heal traumas and to learn things, the more I'm able to do it intentionally and consciously. And at this point, you know, like if we ever want to go into something, for example, um, I want to learn everything I can about the subcontinent of India and the Indus civilization. So we have a two day conference in September called the Indus civilization, in ancient India with like 16 experts, you know? So it's like, I get the opportunity to go really deep within it. And at the same time, like my ultimate goal is to kind of like close this statement up real quick is that my goal is the upliftment of humanity. We have, we have the technology, we have the information, we have the know-how to create such a beautiful world. And you can say for the last 2000, 3000 years, since we didn't have the ability to um, transfer information at such a rapid pace like we have with the internet right now, that even though sub, um, some communities and tribes had the ability to have full liberation, it wasn't a widespread message for the last couple thousand years. But now we have everything that we need, but we still exist within this delusion. We have so many solutions. We have like templates of psychology and how to navigate the human consciousness and how to treat our kids when they're born, all these things, but we don't do it. So the reason why I do what I'm doing is just to keep providing nonstop awareness on a non-biased platform that allows for us to have these discussions so that we could figure out together like how we can create this new world. Right. That is so important. I mean, I mean, everyone sort of mentioned trauma. I think we we come in and it's the trauma of being human, first of all. And then once we learn to be human, there's this other trauma that we're not actually human, you know, where so we have to adjust to that level, which is like on a planetary mindset is what the world is. And now it's like, oh, we're not the smartest people on the block. We're we're not alone. We're just the. the everything's being blown open and we're not even the humans we've been so conditioned to think we are by our media, our government, our politicians, our religions there. We are so much more. And, and that's not trauma, but it's, it, it's, it's like, you know, when you're looking through the world through such a narrow frame and that frame is opened up, which is what's so beautiful about Kamara's illustrations, like, oh yeah, there is a world and somebody, people have seen it. And it's like, oh, this is some, this is a sort of, like I said, postcards from the edge or something, right, Kamar? I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to say too, Alan, not to, sorry to interrupt you. No, um, no, go ahead. There are, there are a lot of people who can't even accept the fact that, that life is finite and that at some point in time, you're not going to be in your current body anymore and that you're a soul and that you're having these transmigratory experiences through time and space and through different dimensions and that it's quite possible that it isn't linear at all. And that, you know, you're, you're, you're doing different things here and there. There are people who can't accept the fact that they're not going to be here at some point in time. And so we have this problem where like, you know, people have to evolve and it takes time. And I agree with Neil, like we have such a great platform, such a great base, you know, when, when you're painting, you have a, you have like gesso, you know, you build up your base, then you kind of build it up. We have that. We have a good foundation, but we got to work on it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's why Sheila's work, I think, as a walk in, as someone who understands the migration of souls, right, Sheila? Talk about that because it's like your soul is from somewhere else. I mean, all of ours are, but you come in with a knowing as this being now, right? Right. And so, um, yeah. When I came in in 1999, um, I didn't know who I was, and it took several years for the integration process to occur. I had been a very sick person. All of a sudden, I was healthy, and with that new health came a new lifestyle, new life choices, new educational opportunities, and for me, as I began to overcome all of my doubts, uh, realizing that, yes, indeed, I am a soul having a human experience, then things began to come into alignment and more of that multidimensionality, which is what we are already, and more of, and I'm going to say timelines, it felt as if time began to collapse because I and myself began to expand. And I think I was meeting that energy 
where it already was. But initially, my frequency just wasn't there. Mm-hmm. And as walk-ins, many of us, most of us know where we have come from. And in my case, I came in from a collective. I was in my multidimensionality already. And we, I and thousands of other souls that were in their multidimensionality was out doing our thing way out in the Andromedan system. And we heard that cry from Gaia. Mm -hmm. And so we came to assist and we're still here as are many of the other walk-ins. There are many walk-in programs throughout the universe. And um, one of the strongest one is in the Andromedan galaxy. And we have many, many walk-ins that I encounter that's like, oh yes, this is exactly where I'm from. And for all of us, there is this kind of the incubation period. And I think that even as much as I feel like that I have integrated, I can continue to expand, I continue to evolve, I continue to remember. And Kamara, your art, as I said earlier, um, it really activated something in me today. And I'm super excited to see, you know, what that brings. And I just love like Kieran Marina, who is so in tune with who she is from such a, a young age and being able to speak so articulately about what's happening um, in the world and the knowledge that she she brings through it's you know this is just a very exciting time and I know that we all have chosen to be here even if we're not a walk-in who said yes I'm coming into this body right now um we all chose to be here mm, right so Mary you, it looks like you I can feel I can feel like you you know your thoughts there Mary <laughs> and I know because you're at you're following you're tracking this thing you're you're at the edge. So where is this going as you see, as we move into this new time, this new dimensionality? Well, I feel, and, and many of those that I'm you know, working with, that we are very close to some kind of catalyst or event. Mm-hmm. And it's like the, the frequency has to reach a certain level, a bit like the hundredth monkey where enough people on the planet are, are, are away to, um, be part of this, this shift in consciousness. The, the fascinating thing for me is there are so many out there that are having experiences that we don't know about because they don't even know themselves that they're, they've always just felt they're different. They've always said, you know, I'm, I, I've never found anyone like me. And I'm saying to them, when you own yourself, when you fully integrate and accept yourself, then you are gonna meet those like you everywhere, because you're then, what's been the issue is people have been so afraid to speak their truth, to say, you know what? You may think this, you may think that, but really I don't care because this is me. This is who I am. This is how I know I am as a galactic being. And to do that like Marina, that's the frequency. When we all yeah. speak our truth and we say, the emperor has no clothes guys. <laughs> Then right. it happens. Then the magic happens. Right. Beautiful. And Barbara, this, that's why your work is so important, because you go into people's consciousness and helps them, help them experience what they mm. always suspected but never could acknowledge. Right. Do you want to talk about that? Oh, a little bit? Right. It's so thrilling uh, for me and certainly for them. And after a session where so much becomes clear, um, you know, they are so appreciative, just incredibly grateful, you know, for opening that up for them. And more and more people I find are coming to me uh, who come with the uh, wish to find out why they are really here in this life. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed in the last maybe two years, um, instead of coming for past life regressions or specifically uh, what might be extraterrestrial experiences they've had. More people uh, keep coming who really want to know what their sole purpose is. And number one, I mean, I'm impressed that more and more people are even aware that they are a soul and that they chose to come into this lifetime, which I've been aware of for a long time, but I think most people in the mainstream don't 
tend to think of things. Uh, they don't think of themselves in those terms, as far as I know. But um, but more and more people are catching on about that. I, I think things really, really are opening up. And just last night, I watched the Olympic of opening ceremonies in Tokyo. And um, well, I've always been impressed with this aspect, but, and, and this is why I may, mainly wanted to see it again, was because it brings together all of these people in the world. I mean, country after country after country, races after races after races, cultures after cultures after cultures. And, and as they came into the big arena, there were all these Japanese people standing around the edges of where they'd come and they were waving and jumping up and down and welcoming them, you know, from every single country. And I, I was just almost sobbing in tears thinking, thank God, you know, this is, I mean, thank God for the Olympics because mm -hmm. even though it's highly competitive, but still, it brings together excellent people from all over the world who live together, commune together, make friends together, and compete against each other, sure. But it's the togetherness part that I think is wonderful. And I was sitting there thinking, what an opportunity this would be. Now, hopefully, this will happen in the future. But what an what a great opportunity, especially with holographic projections that we do up the yin yang now, that if they could introduce the idea of coming together also with the extraterrestrials mm -hmm. and with many beings from other dimensions. I mean, what a great opportunity that would be to open that up for yeah. people watching yeah. all over the world. That's the next Olympics will be that. I mean, or some future or a coming together. It feels it's a microcosm of what's possible that yeah. the world can come together. Maybe we could join with other worlds. Um, yes, I, I mean, that, that's the next huge yeah. step. But, yeah. but we've got the technology to do that. And some of us have the consciousness to do it. Mm. We just, I guess we just have to really talk to those Olympic organizers <laughs> before the next one. I mean, it doesn't matter which country it is well, in. You know, it's just okay. we've got to open up beyond this yeah. worldly domain. Uh, uh. Well, it's happening. This panel, this forum, these two days, Portal to Ascension, I think it's part of it. Neil, did you want to take some questions you texted me? Um, yeah, what, we have we have some questions in the Q and A that maybe we can go through. Oh, right, sure. What are they? I'm not, I haven't looked sure. at. It. Um, let's see here. Okay, my question for the panel: One, Barbara, Barbara Lamb referred to an electromagnetic disaster. Is this pr a probability on the current timeline? If so, can you say more about the timing and nature of this? Well, you know, I can't really answer that personally because. This was not an idea that came from me. Um, it came from uh, somebody else. I think it was Jim Sparks. And, um, and so I don't know if it's on this timeline and I don't have a great understanding about timelines, but it certainly suggests that, you know, things can change and happen, mm -hmm. happen and change um, at any moment. We can yeah. be going down yeah. one path and then boom, you know, something else happens and, and people think of that as going down a different timeline. So, and I think that that's why uh, predictions and prophecies about the future are so fraught with possible inaccuracy because of all the changes, all the different dynamics that can happen. So. Right. I don't know if that is going to happen, but I certainly think it's a possibility. Well, Geraldine, do you get, I think you get stuff about timelines. What are you seeing, Geraldine? 
Yeah, I think that's an amazing question. And I mean, when we think about timelines, we think of it as something, again, we some often want to look at it as linear, you know, something that's in the future or in the past. But I think we're, we need to come into uh, conceptualizing. And I think what nature is showing us and the design of nature, if we look at different organisms in, in the universe and we, even within the body, there's a certain spherical form to it. When we look at the sacred geometry and the complexity of organisms always end up in a spherical form. So it's like we as a as a human organism are coming into this spherical form. We as a as multiverses are manifesting in this spherical form. Everything is coming into this unity, which is the awareness that we are one, that we are whole, that we are interconnected to one another. So when we talk about timelines, we are experiencing everything simultaneously and we have the ability of tapping into these different timelines at any given time in our present moment. So this is how we are able to communicate intergalactically, interdimensionally, you know, all of that is like happening. Now, if you understand that, the laws of creation are telling us that when we find that unity, the you know, the divine trinity, the feminine masculine come into that balance, that's when it can create life. That's when we can create life, when we embody that kind of foundation. Um, and that's where we enter that point of that singularity or that creation where the mechanism of the body manifests in the physical and in the interdimensional. So we need to understand that in a way that our thoughts, our words, our intentions, the way that we feel about ourselves and others, every little expression that we give off is creating and it's part and we're co-creating ultimately together something as we move forward. So in the present, we really are off the timeline when we are can be truly, truly in that alignment exactly. of, of embodiment with the DNA and all the multidimensional realities. Wait, yeah. Nadi, I think you had something to say about that, timelines. Uh, did I? Multidimensional yes. <laughs> timelines? Um, well, I don't know because I was a little bit caught up in the, um, I've been interested in the idea of a catastrophe. I'm not interested in it, <laughs> but I've been wondering about the trajectory of humanity for sure. And that sometimes seems like a nice clean sweep. So <laughs> it's great to know that um, this co-created reality, you know, we have so much more capacity than we think we do. And Geraldine, every choice, every thought, every, you know, every moment is a choice in a timeline. So we are so powerful. I have a thousand thoughts, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and, and, and share something on this? Yeah, please. Yeah. I did a, um, a presentation on, what was it? Sound and vibration, ancient history. And when I was doing research on that, I found on physics.org um, some research on um, cataclysms on Earth and the past cataclysms over like hundreds of thousands of years. And basically the bottom line of their research was, and this is from mainstream science, that Earth is adhering to some sort of rhythmic pattern that is attracting cataclysms, okay? So realize what they're saying there. And they're saying not that something's happening, they're saying there's some sort of rhythm going on with basically our rotation, the equinox, the galaxy position, the solar system position that attracts cataclysm, which one shows me how like it's all ordained and this is kind of like um, something that must be in our cards to keep occurring in order for us to have certain experiences. But then after that, I realized as well that you can get to a level of consciousness and technology in order to shift out of those cataclysmic timelines. And then if you look at um, some of the prophecies, like the sixth world, the fifth sun, um, those kind of prophecies, they've talked about how the earth has been destroyed and recycled through cataclysms. But this next one, the fifth world is supposed to be an etheric one in which we take our bodies with us and we don't have that cataclysm. So I think just the way that everything's evolved now with technology and um, all we need to do is have our consciousness catch up to it, right? So <laughs> yeah. well, that's the only thing. <laughs> so once we get there, which is why we're doing what we're doing, that we will be able to navigate and not have to have that reset button. Right. You know, Right. Well, Kamara, do you sort of draw timelines or time out of out of the linear time? Can you talk about what you think about past, present, future time and um, how? You know, so just yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go, no, yeah, go ahead. it's yeah, it's cool. I mean, you know, like quantum physicists are talking a lot 
now about, I'm not a scientist, so. Um, <laughs> quantum physicists are talking a lot now about the nonlinear aspect of time and how, you know, in different aspects of the universe, uh, physics are completely different. In different galaxies and different spaces and different solar systems on different planets, you know, physics are different just because of the magnetic, you know, aspects of a planet or a star, right? So you gotta understand that, like, it, it, even when you think about your mind and how you think about things, your mind has a nonlinear uh, construct, has a nonlinear program. So I can go back in time at any moment and I can relive a moment, a, a sad moment, a happy moment, an embarrassing moment nonlinearly. So in a sense, you're already time traveling in every moment. And so when I think about like Akashic Records, this idea that everything is, let's say being recorded, um, this, is, this is the connectivity we have and so our whole cosmic existence, our whole existential existence is nonlinear, you know, in, in a very logical way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Hey, Marina, does, do your guides talk about this? Maybe you, if you feel like you want to channel in some higher dimensional information, like if you feel like you want to tap into that level of your altered states of consciousness and download something for us. <laughs> I was actually uh, thinking about it, and yes, it, time is definitely not linear, and it is multidimensional because we're talking about quantum physics mechanics, and actually, there is a geometrical pattern in how time expresses itself and its revolutions, its cycles of energy, just like frequency. So it has the Fibonacci sequence structure, and it is kind of like multidimensional in nature because it is interconnected with all parts of itself, like all aspects of its kind of like a spiral, you know? So it's kind of interesting because one of the information that I was receiving from many people's shoe that I've been talking is that many, many souls are getting that they come actually from the future, not the past. They are not longer talking just about past lives, but they're talking about future lives. Now, as we know in multidimensionality, we have no origin as to like linearly, you know, like past, future, present, like, I mean, past or future, it is present, mm -hmm. you know? So actually we kind of say that we come from the future, we come from the past, but, um, there is this, um, there is this kind of like trend or this kind of a uh, pattern that I see in people, and it's that they feel that they come from the future. And what I observe is that we are now tapping collectively into our future versions, like versions of ourselves that come from the future. And the thing that they will all share in common is that they will say, "I feel that we are here to upgrade timelines." And this is something that I actually also get that this future version of us that we are tapping into is informing us that this aspect of the future is coming here to be embraced, is coming together to bring that consciousness of how to upgrade the timeline, you know, how to help the galaxy expand and uplift its frequency. Because right now the position of earth, right now how the earth is positioned and the movement that is uh, going forward along with the galaxy and the solar system and all these astros and its connections to different you know um planets it's informing itself of really specific ideas really specific topics and and energies of transformation events of transformation uh, portals are opening and it's informing itself of uh, something really kind of like influential in terms of um, mm. consciousness evolution in the galaxy. So mm. it is, I, I'm seeing this uh, all the way in many different parts of the world, many different people. They feel that we, an aspect of ourselves coming from the future is actually helping a great these timelines mm. into becoming more of an uplifted ones so that the galaxy can uplift its frequency. You know what I get just sitting here with all these great souls, these great multidimensional beings, is that the illusion is that we are just here. I mean, there's so much more to us. I mean, the fact that we can bridge our consciousness right now from all over the world, Marion, Australia, and everyone, everywhere, and everyone watching online from everywhere. It's we are so vast that the the illusion is just 
that this only timeline exists that that or this and and when we start to wake up to these levels of of other parts of ourselves we realize that there is no past no future no present there's just whatever this thing is that's in a way undefinable i think it's like we're trying to grasp the uh, uh, ungraspable with our minds but in the being part we know there's so much more um all around that's that's sort of what kamara illustrates but but i want to ask maya when you had your experience with john mack you already knew the past and the future and your awareness yeah. does that make sense what we're saying here in terms of your mm, evolution of this non-local non-linear awakening if, if you can unmute, unmute maya yes and no i mean it, it, terminology is it, right I, I had someone who wrote in a minute ago talk about language you know because we are if we're evolving we need to evolve our language i one of my most favorite uh science fiction movies which is really the first science fiction movie to ever be up for an Academy Award in ages, I think it's since E.T., frankly, was the movie Arrival, which had to do with how do you have a language between species that look at language very, very, very differently. And a lot of it had to do with timelines. The entire movie really had to do with right. how, do we, how do we approach timelines. And um, the the person in the movie with the greatest gift in all of it was a person who had the intuitive psychic ability to move between past, present and future. And here was a movie, just a mainstream movie with great actors and actresses, but it, had, it nailed down so many of the things that we're really talking about. And uh, I have to say, you know, I've, you know, I, I, one of the things I said today was that, you know, as a hybrid, we are also, evo we're evolving. We have, I didn't just arrive on the planet, a perfectly put together hy hybrid. I evolved with the evolution of Gaia and the evolution of the consciousness that was on the planet. So it, it was a dance that, that I depended upon uh, where we were every year of my life gave me a greater capacity to evolve a new aspect of myself. And it wasn't until just a few years ago that I really had an integrated experience with my future self, which was an extraordinary experience because I am so devoted to and, and wired to just be present, period. I don't, I don't go in the past very much. You know, I don't, I don't really want to go and, and muck through my childhood. And, you know, I just am here in the moment. And, and by being here, I travel a lot, which is a very odd thing. I'm present for where I am and I move multidimensionally all the time. I've had so many time space movements in my life. And, I, and then I come back into sort of constellation of who I am on this planet and bring with me whatever I've learned. Uh, but, you know, I, I think there is, I'm developing a new language for that past, present, future fusion. You know, it's like, it's, it's a fusion. And so the, I use the word seamless today. We are getting to the place where we can seamlessly move between all dimensions simultaneously without having to compartmentalize that and say, oh, that's the past, oh, that's the present. Uh, that's been my experience in the last four years. It's also mm -hmm. been my experience since John Mack. I mean, John has been very influential in helping me consolidate myself, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Right. Um, yeah, you know, as you're talking, I'm realizing what we're really all talking about is consciousness in the sense, and we're actually, figuring out what that is and it's it's it is past present and future but it's also something we have i feel we have yet to really define people say conscious everything's conscious but it's like that aspect is starting to come into form and we're going to start to know how to use it maybe like these ets are using it to travel through time and space or like kamar pictures there's this movement and this learning about what consciousness really is and what it can do and how to use it to be 
the true multidimensional beings we are. I think this is what you talk about, Geraldine, as the DNA comes online, it actually affects the conscious awareness. Can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, th and this is where we are kind of tapping into this technology of the human body, this organism that is so incredibly advanced, that simply by coming into that present moment, we have access to, um, and, and this is, it's interesting what you said, that it's so hard for us to grasp, but that's exactly the thing. I mean, what consciousness is, it's, it's everything and nothing at the same time. So, it's hard for us to conceptualize that, to embody that, because we're used to having a very physical, you know, three-dimensional existence. Mm -hmm. And to pull into that nothingness or in, in which there is, you know, everything, mm -hmm. it's difficult. It, it requires us to come in precisely to this feminine kind of energy of complete, um, you know, surrender, you know, very mm -hmm. trusting surrender. And that's what the intuition is. That's where we're at collectively, the ability to activate our intuitive um, faculties, our abilities in, in all the areas of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the, that's the future in this language, this universal language that we're talking about, as we saw with holographic DNA, is the vibrational frequency, the way patterns, waves of, of energy are moving and how they interact with us. So the clearer we are as this organism, the more we come into that, that point, we, ha we are able to translate and process everything that we're receiving in a way where we're also, in a way, choosing. We're choosing mm -hmm. consciously each one of those experiences. So mm -hmm. there's many plain parts to it. The more we learn about that, the more we understand where our free will lies as mm -hmm. these, you know, creative organisms. And either every hybrid that comes in helps us see that, helps us see because, for example, like Marina being able to articulate so well, you know, her understanding of existence, like we need that mm -hmm. and we need to speak more on that, on those terms for mm -hmm. healing and for the advancement of our, our human race. Well, even the images that Kamar brought, yes, there's, there's no absolutely. language for those forms. And we have to create this new way of understanding. Barbara, do you find that when you're working with people, sometimes there's just no words to describe experiences, right? I mean, so what do you do then? What, how do you language something that has yet to be defined? Well, when I'm working with somebody and, and they're having they're in the regression, they're in that altered state, and they're having an incredible experience. Um, I, I do well to just simply be there with them silently and give them space and time to just thoroughly experience it. Now, up to those moments, I like to have them in the regression tell me what they're aware of pretty much moment to moment. But when they get to those moments of transcendence, shall we say, um, then, and it's, it cannot be put into words. And I think shouldn't be forced into the funnel, the tiny little funnel of words. So, so I do well to back off and just say, go ahead and experience that. And whenever you feel like talking about it, go ahead. So sometimes mm -hmm. that will take five minutes, that period of their savoring it. Sometimes it'll take more. I had one person take 20 or 30 minutes once, <clears throat> but I could see by the breathing and, and the facial expressions of the person that they were really experiencing a lot. Mm -hmm. They hadn't just gone mm -hmm. to sleep, in other words. Right. <laughs> so that's really worth giving them the space to totally experience that. And then afterwards, it usually is before the session is completely over, but they're kind of back to that regular right. regression state of consciousness, that level. Mm -hmm. and then, then they might start talking about it, and then that might bring them back toward where it looks like they would be ready to be brought out of the regression. Right. And well, then like, 
Well, like Mary working with children, it must be extremely difficult for, actually, I didn't talk till I was four years old because I just was taking in so many things. I didn't want to be limited by words. And my mother would say, just talk, just talk. And I felt, (laughs) but you know, there's so much, so from children, because there is no words for all of this, all of, how do you do with, deal with it, Mary? Well, there's two things I want to say, and, and certainly a lot of the children are mm. telepathic. Mm. Um, and the biggest issue for the parents is one woman with a three-year-old daughter. She said that um, the difficulty was her daughter was uh, already reading everyone. And she said, you know, when, she's now three and I have to watch everything I think. <laughs> I mean, so um, this is not easy because we really are going to have to be very pure <laughs> with our thinking. Um, but look, I have to go shortly, but I'd like to say one thing. Yes. With the downloads that everybody is experiencing, where some are translatable, some are not translatable, I would like to hypothesize that the reason, uh, the, the, the fact that they're not translatable yet is because we haven't reached mm-hmm. our full activation. Mm-hmm. That these are the protocols so we can understand more of this thing we call consciousness. Right. When we have the activation to understand it. So as our DNA that's dormant at the moment gets activated, we are operating in a whole new software. And yes. we need the software mm-hmm. for the new activated biological system. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. So that is what mm-hmm. I suspect is why at the moment we're struggling to interpret this side of our awareness mm. because yet we, need, we still need that software activated to mm. allow us then to be the fully embodied superhuman. Great. Yes, I'm still downloading my software right here. So um, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Wait, Mary, how can people find you if, if they don't know that you're the alien lady? How would people find you? <laughs> well, you just have to look up the alien lady, don't you? And I'm not Mary Roswell, by the way. <laughs> um, just look up ascern.com.au or maryroddle.com.au um, I'm on Facebook very easy to find and mm. all I can say is thank you everyone for being just amazing and mm. for coming to this planet because we need every single one of you so thank you so much thank you support. Mary also has a chapter thank in you, making Mary. contact check it out check out her books the new human and your first book was awakening yes Yes. Thank okay. you, Mary. Always great. great to see you. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Bye, Mary. Bye, Mary. Okay. Bye. So, Neil, thanks. Neil, do we have another question? That took us around a bit. but <laughs> Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I guess you can direct this to whomever. John mm-hmm. is saying, I am 61, likely a wanderer. As I understand it, our DNA is a reflection of who we are. When I leave this body, what is the process to be upgraded as a new improved hybrid? I don't think he has to leave the body to be processed as, or maybe, but um, I think we're being processed now. Um, G- Geraldine, you, you, you're dealing with some of that. What do you say? Yeah, so basically um, how DNA works, it's like a crystal. It stores information. So everything that you experience, not just in waking time, but in dream time, anytime you're in astral projection, anytime you're navigating any other dimensional plane, all of those experiences are being recorded in our in our genetic code, in a, ho- in a holographic uh, system. So what that means is that you're operating on more than just this physical body. In fact, this is just one fragment of yourself. You have multiple fragments of yourself that are operating on other dimensional planes, other planets, things like that. And this is when we have ET contact. We are looking at aspects of ourselves and experiencing through those aspects. So when we talk about death, um, how a successful death or, you know, the moment where we come in that moment where we're detaching from the physical body, our ability to move through this kind of centrifugal vortex or a wormhole, which is created like this black and white 
vortex of energy, it opens up, which is that tunnel of white light that we see, and that allows us to move through. If we're holding on to a lot of low vibrational emotions, fears, you know, a lot of trauma at that moment, a lot of times fragmentation occurs, and so we get stuck. And this is how ghosts and other kinds of fragmentations are created. They are left in between these dimensional planes. So in order to have a successful death, um, the idea is to come into the highest vibrational expression possible, right? The high emotions, this kind of, uh, again, that zero point of non-neutrality, hopefully, where you can then easily detach from the physical and move through this wormhole in a very wonderful way. And that will dictate your next experience Everything that you're experiencing at that point of departure from the physical will dictate how you navigate that next. It'll influence how you navigate the next. Hey, Marina, how do you integrate all the aspects of yourself and kind of make them coherent within a dimensional plane or travel to other dimensions with that? Well, for me, um, the process that I go is that basically... Anytime I see a disorder, I understand that it's there to create a new order. So, you know, in that disorder, the polarity or duality energies and mechanisms start to play, you know. And in that, this balance of masculine, feminine, and negative, positive is when I have to look at the reflection of the negative energy and the positive energy to understand what kind of element, neutral element is within, it's in, in between the, both of them as an idea as, and of who I am so that I can integrate the negative by becoming the positive and understanding that the positive reflection is who I truly am and not the negative. And by doing that, I integrate polarity and I integrate more aspects of who I really am and I create a new order of expression of my of myself and I embody that new energy. Mm, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Geraldine. I didn't mean to jump from your thing because that was very deep too, what you said. And I'll just go back to Kamara because I, I was just this idea of all these dimensions colliding and that you put into like your fifth, I would call them fifth dimensional illustrations. Are you taken there yourself when you are downloading them do you feel like you are and some people call those beings octorians i don't know what maybe you do but do you feel like you're merging with them somehow when you're um communicating that art to others yeah kind of but um i have a technique that i sort of developed um 2017 it's something that i kind of learned about um it's basically this technique where um if i close my eyes i go you know you're you're in void basically right so i kind of have learned to sort of detach from myself and so in that detachment i can um accept the fact that i'm a part of everything and so in being a part of everything um i can access codes i can access energy i can access you know access uh, data streams and i can become a part of them and so in a sense, it's not so much that I feel like I'm there with them. I feel like I can be a part of the experience of that transference, if you will. And so, uh, and then when you're drawing it, you know, drawing it is, drawing is very interactive. And so I like to encourage people to, you know, grab a sketchbook. You don't have to be a professional. Um, yeah, you know, I've been training forever, but you don't have to be a professional. It, it's all about the interactive nature of the experience itself and how your mind and how your soul is going to integrate. Just even drawing the light language out on paper, there's an integrative aspect of that that can really sort of take you to, you know, maybe your next level of perception and help you to develop your mind so that you can understand communication in a little bit of a different way. But yeah. Are you interacting with the beings themselves that are giving you those images? I do feel like sometimes I am getting uh, direct access. I am getting direct information feed, but I also feel like it's so seamless that I'm oftentimes not aware of it. And when I'm sleeping, when I wake up, sometimes I'm very aware that there are beings around me that are imparting information to me, but right. it's seamless. And I think that's, the, I think that's a part of just my experience and, and, right. and how my guides, you know, uh, whoever they may be, um, I think that's just how they've always interfaced with me. That's kind of how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, great. Hey, Nadi, what do you make of, um, you had some great comments yesterday or the other day about Kamara's art being these worlds within world. Can you just comment on also everything you also how are you integrating this panel into your 
awakening. <laughs> um, it's hard to find words. And, and Kamara, what I love about your work is that we don't need words. And it, it's just such a download and an activation. And um, I feel so humbled to be talking with you all and to be part of this, you know, consciousness that is bringing in um, an awareness of our multidimensionality and our connection with our galactic family because, uh, you know, <laughs> whether it's a catastrophe or not or whatever's coming, I, I think Barbara mentioned she had uh, in regression with someone and I've seen, uh, seen mention other, in other places that we can be the ones when, when the shit's going down, we have an orientation of the ships, we can help others we can be present and hold you know hold it down and so all of this is just so affirming that everything that i've done to explore my multidimensionality and everything i do in the world to help people remember their multidimensionality like it's all that matters it's the only thing that makes sense to me and so to be in a group of people um i'm flying so high i am just going to go out and like, like blast everybody with this just love and excitement and enthusiasm i i'm so happy. thank you so much well you're embodying it yes maya maya yeah. i i sent a note to the panelists i it's i have to leave in one uh -oh. minute but I, I wanted to say something to neil besides gratitude in every way uh you would never have known neil that you had anxiety in being public and public speaking and all of that. But I realized something just because of what you created and you call it the portal to ascension. And I realized that I'm very interested in the simplicity of what is so very complex right now, the complex awareness we're trying to create words for and, and, and be able to develop a way to describe experience. I'm trying to create simplicity. And I realized for just a brief second, I thought, I know what I would communicate if I could communicate one thing only as a hybrid. And it is that the portal to ascension is the heart. Mm. It is the portal to the answers to everything we're talking about, to the, 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 uh, the seamlessness, like you were talking about Kamara, um, to, the simplicity of the soul. The soul is not complex. The soul is love, period. There is no other description. The soul is love. And what, what, whatever fragmentation we talk about or all the various ways that we um, have experienced consciousness in the universe, the portal is the heart. And the heart needs to be a bigger part of this conversation at all times, in my opinion. Uh, it's the only place I take my clients who come in with trauma that is indescribable, with uh, doubt that's indescribable, with fear that's indescribable. The minute that I can help anyone resonate with their heart at a, at a, at a core level of essence, it all disappears. Trauma is done. There is no discussion of trauma at that point. And so thank you, Neil, for giving me the simplicity of my own awareness, frankly, by picking the title for this particular platform. I appreciate you greatly. Mm, oh, wow. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for being thank here, Maya. Thank you. See you later. I, yeah. I, I wish I could teleport and hug everybody, but that will oh, be so, soon sort of enough. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> thanks. I, I just wanted to go to Marina because I know it's like three in the morning there for you, Marina, in Spain, right? So yeah. just, I, I know, it. but is there anything you, do, I, do you have a message? Could you tap in and get us something from those higher levels that you're just feeling to communicate at this moment to everyone here, everyone watching? Do you feel like you want to just? Yes, I, I could tap into yeah, let's, a message. Yeah, tap into Oh, okay, sure. Well, um, <laughs> I'm just blank, so you know, I don't know what to share specifically, but okay. if I will have the opportunity, um, if you give me the opportunity, I will say that what I have been meditating lately on my own, when I go and, and think and process information, uh, look at what's going on inside of me, I think that this is just all about being as much na as much natural as we can, you know, because what I observe is that there's so much uh, teachings telling us that 
we are love and we are light and that's the truth it's what we are but this creates some mechanics this creates certain mechanics in the brain of the awakening souls in which we are setting to kind of like forces to be a specific vibration, like to be light, to be love, to be um, that yeah. state of being that represents happiness, that represents an, an uplifted frequency. And we kind of like push away the other parts, which is the yeah. polarity, the negative energies, you know, all of the emotional processes. So anytime we are in a negative vibration, we judge ourselves, you know, it's like, why I'm not being light, why I'm not being love, why I'm not <laughs> this vibration, this is wrong, you know, <laughs> this should, this is the, by high vibration this is not the, the new earth and that's not actually the process the process is that everything is okay everything is natural everything is part of the process you know everything is part of the game beautiful and so we have to remove really that guilt we have to remove that judgment of like the negative aspects of ourselves you know they are there to inform us of who we aren't of what we aren't but it's a guidance process it's just a, an opportunity for us to grow and to embrace a higher vibrational and more integrated aspect of ourselves. So we really need to start accepting that as a really important part of the process and as a guidance system, because the more that we connect with who we truly are, the more that we can connect to what we truly are, which mm. is love, which is light, which is all of that. Mm. Look, beautiful. I mean, that's actually what Thank you so much for that. What you said, Tamara, in the beginning of your lecture, you've accepted all these parts of yourself and were, was able to drop in even deeper into maybe we can call it the divine, the eternal, whatever. But do you, can you add something to that, Tamara? Yeah, absolutely. I think that being able to get to a point where you can integrate aspects of yourself and to be really authentic um, I like complexity, but I also like simplicity. I like all of it. And I think this sort of intimacy that one can achieve by exploring the sort of infinite, infinite intricacies within the self and the interconnections between all your human counterparts, your family members, your peers, you know, us, what we're doing here, there is, there is beauty in every multidimensional aspect of everything in, in this reality that we've been blessed with, that we've been blessed to kind of play around in. Mm. And so uh, I think it's important if, if you can think of it, this is just my opinion. I think if you can think of it in terms of an experience that has a lot to offer um, in, in a way that a good job has a lot to offer, but also in the way that an intimate relationship has a lot to offer, I think you can get more than you could ever imagine. And I think you can start to really appreciate people you know, mm -hmm. for who they are. And you can realize, you know, some people that you don't really want to be around. So I think it's, I, I think it's a very holistic thing. And I really love the details and I really love the simplicity. So mm -hmm. I really love all of it, but it right. is challenging. So I, I think it's all about embracing who you are and going down that path, because that's the path that's going to actually be the most profitable for you. Yeah. No, that's great. I mean, I love what both of you said, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're light and love, but sometimes we're not. <laughs> no, let's face it. <laughs> sometimes where the human part is just takes over and you're upset, someone cuts you off, it's like this. It's like, oh yeah, and embracing that too, right? Come are you embracing the complexities of this single reality, which is just as multidimensional as anything else. So like being to, a uh, human, be, I'm sorry, real quick. Being a human is a, is a very beautiful thing. I'm sorry, Neil. Being a human is a very beautiful thing. And this whole idea of that, you know, people are like, you know, we want to, you know, transcend humanity. I, I totally, I'm on this, I'm there, I'm there with you. Let's do this. But there's something really cool about, about being a human, about seeing what we can do with this, with this human experiment thing. There's something really awesome about that. And I think we can, I think we could take it to the next level. But, you know, we, we got to be willing to do some work and there's a lot of love to give, but we got to give it authentically. That's my opinion. Thanks. Neil. Yeah. And, you know, just everything shared was amazing. Um, but now we're getting into the conversation of um, not just energizing one extreme, but really embracing all of it. Right. And when I first got into, um, you know, when I first, I guess, woke up, became spiritual, <laughs> when I was on that path, I was. 100% disappointed and depressed all the time because I was never enough 
all I saw was people around me that were spiritual, right? And meditating and doing yoga. And I couldn't even sit for like five minutes. So I judged myself so much. It took around 10 years of like complete judgment and disappointment before I even realized that I should embrace what I don't like of myself as well. Uh, because what was happening was I was compartmentalizing parts of my personality that were coming out in very disharmonic ways. And just because I was trying to be something that I can't be all the time, right? And then just to, you know, just the quote that I, I think I created, but I like to say a lot is, you know, you just said that, you know, we can't be love and light all the time. But then it would go to like, it would go to the fact that we're always unconditional love, but that we forget it, right? We get that disconnection. So the quote that I like to say kind of fits with this. It's like, it's the, um, it goes like this. And you've heard it before, probably. The, um, the most unconditional thing the light ever did was allow the darkness to live within it. You know, so it's like love is there all the time. We are vibrational frequency. The, the ability to have free will and experience is pure unconditional love, right? Um, but within that love, we're, we're able to have the free will to choose to have our experiences. And we might disconnect ourselves and forget that we're that love. But that's also part of the experience. And when I came, when I started realizing that and integrating into my own consciousness, that not being that is still part of the experience I signed up for, it allowed me to come back to the zero point and not to be so depressed for so long. I was able to come back to my stillness. Right. The sun is still shining even on a cloudy day. Right. So it's like a little cliche, but it's like, yes, it's always emanating the essence of the beingness and there's all this weather going around sometimes. I mean, Barbara, anything you want to say as we wrap up here and like, how do we move forward as a hybrid nation or <laughs> hybrid world? Well, I, I think the more that we keep speaking out and sharing what we know, uh, the more we're likely to awaken other people. And mm. uh, there are so many people waiting to be awakened, I think. Mm. And so let's just keep doing what we're doing. Right. I think that everyone's waiting to be awakened, you know, whether the, they, the, I mean, you know, we're a planet or civilization or you know, humanity that's really at the verge of change. And like most of us maybe wouldn't even understand this conversation 10 years ago or everyone watching. And now we've developed a, a culture, a community where there's probably a lot of people who don't understand what we're saying, but at least we understand what we're saying. We're getting it. We're, de we're developing a connection point that is moving us all together into a new future, new reality, whatever you want to call it. And that's exciting for me that we actually are developing a language, a visual context, a, 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 a contextualization of experiences that are new and fresh and unknown. And that's what's yeah. exciting for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, one exciting thing to me is that um, Mary Edwards and I have written this book for children about children's extraterrestrial experiences. So hopefully this is what I'm talking about, about how we need to be sharing what we know to a larger group of people. Anyway, uh, children are so important and they're having experiences, you know, so many of them, not only with other beings, other extraterrestrials, but other dimensional beings. And so in acknowledging that for children and encouraging them to be aware of what's happening to them or to their fellow children, if they're not having these experiences, I think that's, that's part of the whole uh, the whole outreach. So we're, our book is E.T. Friends in Space, Kids Adventures with E.T. Friends in Space. And that's just one example of, of what we could all be doing. You know, it's a just great, share, it's a great example. Yes. Thank you. You're adding yeah. to the culture. You're adding this, you know, book, this drawing, this music, this, to this to this emerging culture. And it's just in process, it seems. Um, Nadi, you have anything to say as we wrap up here? I do. The monsoons are here in Sedona. <laughs> it's like really loud right now. Um, 
I just want to say thank you for giving me a chance to say how grateful I am and Alan for doing this and Sheila, all that you've done. And I'm so glad that tomorrow is here, that we get more tomorrow. Oh, yes. We'll talk about tomorrow just as after we say. And Kamara, what, I mean, thank you for being here all day and giving so much of your work and art and, and um, you know, process. You really went into your process and really appreciate that. Do you have anything you want to leave us with? I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate every one of you. I learned from everyone and everything that's been said, everything that's been uttered has, has been very enlightening. And uh, yeah, I just want to encourage people to be creative, get a sketch pad, bang around on the keyboard, do what you need to do to connect with your deepest self. And through that, you can find some portals into your most authentic self. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Kamara Jones, look at Art Soldier 77. Look at those drawings, be transported, awaken to this new dimension. And, you know, check out tomorrow, whatever, if you're, you know, you same Zoom link. So thanks. Yeah. I definitely will. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I look forward to your next download creation. They are, they just like, you know, I can understand what Nadi said. It's like, they just kind of like open me up. They're like information in there. I, I don't understand it, but I know, I know I get it on some level. So it's, um, thank you. And, and Geraldine, Anything you want to say about today? You started the day. That was like how many hours ago? Yeah, it was a, such an amazing day. Mind-blowing, incredible presentations. I am all honored to be here in, you know, with all of you amazing, great souls. And thank you. Um, the only last thing I, I would like to say is about the hybrid. You know, I notice in, in the spiritual community and in the, this community as well, that sometimes we try so hard to want to embody the idea of what a hybrid looks like or what it is. You know, and, and really, uh, that's one thing that I'd like to say that we are we are potentially all hybrids. I mean, it's literally encoded in our genetic. It's it's in us. It's in and it, and the only way to reach that true form expression is by going inside instead of going outside. So don't search so much outside. Don't get distracted with the ideas and and you know of what hybrid is because you know it's it's inside that wisdom is already there for you so that's the only thing i would add um it's it's inner wisdom yeah no that adds to what i wanted to say sort of it's like all my ideas after looks listening today and watching it are dissolved and i i in a way don't know what anything is it's just all <laughs> taking it all in without yeah. defining it but and and letting whatever happens rearrange but it's it's like this whole nine hours, I guess it's been, it's like food for me. It, it's nourishing. It's, it, it feeds this, this mind of creative expansion that we all have. And yeah, it's, it's nourishing. That's all I can say for me. And um, Neil, Sheila, what about you? Well, I want Sheila to chime in right now, but I just want to say about Sheila is, yeah. is that, you know, the walk-ins conference that we did, the three-day conference, was life-changing, life-changing event. And I've done a thousand of those, right? And this one is on that level as well. And there's something with Sheila I don't even know. But when we co-produce events, they are literally life-changing transformational events because of how it's really all designed around support and community. That's like what she's creating there. So my hat's off to Sheila for, you know, being a part of this. That's beautiful. Thank and you, this Sheila. is just the first day. Sheila, we have a whole nother day. To add on. So yeah, thank you, Sheila, for holding that space of, yeah. of, of letting your heart lead you into wanting to put these things on. I mean, you were the germ that sprouted into this beautiful plant that that no knew that this sort of needed to happen somehow. And I didn't even, I thought, oh yeah, I'll introduce Sheila to Neil and they'll just do their thing. But it's like something's like kind of growing, cementing and blossoming. So thank you. Well, thank you guys. And um, it is all growing because of the support that I've received from both of you. And I am very, very grateful. And for all of the speakers coming on, um, when I, when I first became a walk-in and I knew I had this mission of bringing 
unconditional love, support, community, nurturing, all of these aspects, you know, I thought I had to do it all myself. <laughs> and so I was working five days a week and I was teaching at night and I had workshops on the weekend and I was killing myself. And my guys kept saying, go bigger, go bigger, go bigger. And I'm like, I can't go any more bigger. I'm stretched like a rubber band. I'm about to break. And that's when it was like, no, 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 this has nothing to do with you. And so the idea of cultivation, and really for me, it's about grassroots because everyone has their story to tell and everyone has something to share. And we're all important regardless what our jobs are, where we are in life. Everyone came here to have this experience that we're all experiencing. And today, look at this new reality and the great vibrations that we've all created created that's going out. It's just going to help to wake more and more people up until we can get to that place that we need to be and that we can transcend. And I think part of that transcending is actually going within. As we learn more and more about who we are, we drop into that humanness, we, we connect with our spirit and we become that which we came here to experience. And so I am so excited. I thank everyone from the bottom of my heart. And yes, we do have a great day tomorrow. And I have put, and I'm going to go ahead and put the agenda in there to, uh, again. And I'd like to invite everybody that was here on our panel and that spoke to please come back tomorrow and join us tomorrow as we just continue this fabulous fabulous discussion because the more we co-create um the more that we expand so thank you thank you and Kamara I can't wait I hope that something from this event just burst forth oh I got a new idea so just, just keep watching oh, right. watch my account watch and watch my account it'll it's coming right. awesome. so, yeah awesome. we'll be stay in touch Kamara definitely do you just want to name some of the people that are um showing up Tomorrow? Sure. Yeah, tomorrow we start out uh, with Phil Gruber. Then we have Rebecca Rose and we go back into some more of the sound healing, which also serves as an opportunity for people to take a break, grab something to eat, and then to come back. Then we have Valera, uh, Bruno, Jacqueline Smith, Daryl Anka, and then more of our panel discussion. And so tomorrow is just going to keep growing on the synergy that we've created tonight. So I hope everyone, you know, tell all of your friends, join us tomorrow, be part of the discussion. You know, you have the opportunity to ask everyone your questions and, you know, just come on in, join us. Mm. And as do I we, say on use, the Wish Alliance. What's pardon, that, Barbara? Do we use the same link? Do yes. we use the same you would link? use the same link, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. And um, but, you know, uh, Sheila was going to say something about what she right. says. With the wish Alliance. Go ahead. All right. With, you know, with the Wish Alliance, um, one of the taglines is when people enter, it's like, welcome home. And so everybody here, you know, we're all community. We're all connected. And so just keep spreading the word and just welcome home. Please go and visit the Wish Alliance website. That's wishalliance.org. Um, if you're not on our mailing list, please sign up so you can continue to um, just participate in all of the various discussions because we have discussions that go on every Thursday night, every second Monday. We're always looking for speakers because the speakers that come are there because they want to speak from their heart and share their wisdom uh, just to help people grow and expand. So everybody come on down. Hey, great. Neil, do you want to end with a, a little word? Yeah, I do. A poem? Oh, I felt like that. And we're just getting some good feedback on the chat. Someone said, um, wow, just you're correct. If only you knew how this has changed. God bless you all. Um, I guess so. Yeah, we had, we had up to 100 on each YouTube. So we had maybe the most amount of people streaming live from the YouTube was 200. So good amount of people have been tuned in for this. And we're all sitting out collective energy you know, right. the cosmos and just one more invite to whoever's checking out on YouTube. If you want to sign up, um, go ahead. You get replay, unlimited replay access 
for as long as the internet is still around. Um, <laughs> and then when that, um, and then tomorrow you get to attend live and also get the replay for that as well. Plus, three thousand. That was nine hours today. We went through right. That's pretty much about yeah. nine. So you mm-hmm. get to watch that if you sign up, and there's there's a lot more where that came from. So yeah. thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank I'm, you. I'm gonna get Neil, into- Neil's going to take us home. Okay. So I'm actually in the process of releasing an album. I have um I have six albums coming out. Hopefully by the end of this year. Um, wow. And then each. The first album is called Planet Earth, and it's it's a seven it's ten songs with classical music um, orchestrated for my music in the background for my poetry, and um, then the other one's called um, Galactic, and then there's going to be one on Nibiru and the Anunnaki, so separate albums that are spoken word album with classical music in the background. But then also my hip hop album is being mastered right now, so my hip hop album will be out soon. But anyways, this right now I'm going to do a cappella the first three tracks of my Planet Earth album. And then I'll do the the last few tracks tomorrow. And some of you may have heard these ones. Wow. My favorite. Good for you. Thank you. So this is called, the first one is called Meditate and Levitate. <sighs> Meditate and Levitate. Waves of frequencies resonate higher. I'm connected to the provider source of cosmic energy, where you're going to be one single entity, expansion remedied, oneness must breathe, exhale and let free, consciousness to be, experiences of you and me. Souls of interdimensional beings to feel, hear, and see this third dimensional planetary existence. All time can be found in one instance, in this realm of linearity, atoms in anarchy, quantum polarity, the epitome of creation, facing our egos, acquiring patience, waiting to let go of our nations and join the federation of souls that will take us to the fifth world. Track two, this one called Astral Travel. Astral Travel, vibrating high out of the center of the galaxy, rematerialize etheric energy, dropping in density, increasing in complexity. To the ends of the spiral, we shall go. Planets form all around. I see a water world in the system of soul. My soul speculates in this illusion, a spacesuit made of skin, into a polarized reality of duality, oneness, and sin. Carbon based will join the crystalline children. You see, I slowly descend through the ozone. I will be born soon, so I enter a womb. First cycle almost ends. I rode the unity wave into this dimension. A fabricated fallacy. I forgot when time became linear. Masculine-based society suppressing her. Feminine energy creating stargates and other etheric tools going through the wormhole, spinning around like a whirlpool, here to overrule the external in this earth school. From my eyes, I finally lifted the wall. I reincarnated, reincarnated onto this planet November 17th, 1982. Oh, wow. That was dope. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, incredible. I love it. Awesome. So this last one right here, I don't remember by heart, so I'm going to read it off. And this is called The Mission. In one second, let me pull it up. All right, here we go. I want to live life to the fullest. Each day, seconds turn into minutes. Time passes by. Animals and leaves die, growing by the season. Growing and planting seeds again is all what all men and women are destined to do in order to continue to live the life that we choose. The sun shines light as we move through heaven's tunnels and tubes, wormholes, niches, and grooves, navigating existence so we can enter our womb in gestation. I am elation, exhilaration, and patience creates balance in this wasteland of nuclear pollution. My observation of creation is that we're all heading for the same destination. Millennials of intergalactic wars can't stop the frequency that we're in store for. So I spit from my core of my lost fragmented soul, reclaiming pieces I left in this world. The carrot in front of me, the elusive pearl, I remember. I came here before. Just one MC, energetically emanating empathy, connecting to the fire within me where I became pure energy, an allergy towards this world of anarchy, am- amnesia in this fallacy, anesthesia to numb out the insanity, overstimulation leading to apathy. Speak out against the status quo. Accusations of blasphemy. The gravity of this third dimensional reality eventually causes atrophy, physical and emotional bankruptcy. So I travel the galaxy to release the agony, rearrange the anatomy to avoid the catastrophe. Let's achieve cosmic morality. Time to embrace the duality is the only analogy that supersedes all we need just so that we can let go and breathe. Just so that we can let go and breathe. Thank you. Awesome. Oh my. Love it. 
That's Amazing. a beautiful way to <laughs> begin. Awesome. Love you all so much. That's See it for today, guys. Thank you guys. Yep. Get some sleep, Marina. Okay, thank you, everybody. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Barbara, Nadi. Bye. Night. See everyone Bye. tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, everyone watching. <laughs>